time for RTB 101, where we discuss practical questions to equip you to share your faith more effectively. And here to help me talk about the question, is it okay for me to have doubts about my faith, is philosopher and theologian Kenneth Samples. Welcome, Ken. Hi, Krista. You know, doubts, I'm sure you've experienced this. They can be very unsettling at time. I know I have doubts. I'm sure there's there's issues that, that you struggle with. There's parts of the Bible that I wish were more clear. Um, I'm just wondering, after three and a half decades in the realm of apologetics, Ken, do you ever struggle with doubts? I do. Uh, in fact, I wrote a book entitled Without a Doubt, but I must be a hypocrite because I I do have doubts. Um, uh, in fact, Krista, I, I think that part of being a finite creature means we don't know everything. Uh, it's also some of the things we believe are mysterious. And so I don't think it's a bad thing that people have doubts. I think it's important to be able to work through them, but I think it's a natural thing for a thinking person to have doubts. That's a really good point, um, because we are finite creatures, and sometimes we do have a tendency to think, well, unless I know everything, you know, how can I really be sure of anything? Right. Um, I'm just wondering, like, what keeps you in the faith? What is it about Christianity that keeps you walking forward in your faith because you've been walking with the Lord for, for a very long time. Yeah. Yeah. I, I grew up kind of a nominal Catholic and in college I made a commitment to Christ. And so I've been walking with the Lord for more than 40 years now. I would say two things are very meaningful to me, Krista, uh, from a theological biblical point of view, I would say, of course, that, God's providential grace in my life, um, the Lord's grace allows me to continue to walk with him and to walk within grace. I think from kind of a cerebral or intellectual point of view, I, I find uh, historic Christianity's explanation of reality to be very powerful, uh, to be convincing. I, I think that Christianity makes sense of the world, it makes sense of me, uh, and so I think the explanatory power and scope of Christianity assures me that I'm on the right track and that I'm encountering truth. That's really good, because I can, I can relate to that. I, I know that for me, on the days when I have doubts and struggle, what grounds me is the resurrection, that yeah. I have confidence that Jesus really rose from the dead. And if he rose from the dead, that changes everything because he demonstrates that he has power over the ultimate em enemy of death. So you, you kind of have to have those anchors, I feel like, uh, in your soul that keep you grounded on the days that are difficult. Well said. I I think that the resurrect and, and of course, one of the encouraging elements intellectually is that uh, Paul says, uh, you know, the resurrection is potentially falsifiable. If, if we could discover Christ's body, it would be falsified. So it's, we don't appear to be engaging in myth. We, we appear to be engaging in historical uh, truths. Now, there's a lot of conversation happening right now in our culture. Uh, we see a lot of examples of Christians who deconvert away from their faith. Um, right. I'm just curious if you could sit down for coffee with someone who was thinking about deconverting. They've been kind of pummeled by a lot of doubts that just don't seem to have answers. Right. What would you want to tell them? Are there even maybe some steps that you might recommend that they they do before they they deconvert? Yeah. Yeah, I appreciate you asking that question and I have thought about that. I, I think some things that I would say, Krista, is I would want to communicate that, uh, you know, it, it's common that thoughtful people will have doubts. Uh, again, we're thinking people. Again, we're finite creatures. Uh, there are myster mysterious elements of Christianity. But I think I would also want to maybe drill down a little bit and see What's the source of these doubts? Do, do you have doubts about the factual underpinning of Christianity? Or are the doubts more 
uh, you know, emotional, psychological, uh, spiritual in nature. Sometimes people have been hurt, particularly maybe they've had a bad experience in the church, and that can unsettle them. So I'd want to talk with them about what is the source of the doubt, and have you taken any steps to see if maybe there's a way of, of uh, addressing it effectively? I, again, I don't think it's a, uh, a problem that people have doubts. I think it's very important how you decide to try to address them. That's a really good point because having doubts is, is normal and common. We see people in scripture who, who wrestle yeah. with doubts. The, the thing is, is how do, we, how do we walk through those doubts? And sometimes it can be a very isolating experience where we think we have to sort it out all by ourselves. I think if I was sitting down for coffee with somebody who was thinking of deconverting, I would want to encourage them to start resourcing, you know, with other people that have had similar questions. There's, there's no new questions. So let's find someone who's wrestled through that question and come to a meaningful answer within the context of the historic Christian faith. I think there's a lot of wisdom to be gained from, from people who have gone before us. So... That, that, that's exactly right. And there are people historically who have gone through the dark side of the soul. Uh, important to read some of the, the great Christian thinkers of the past. And as you touched upon, talking with contemporary people. I mean, I think every church ought to have uh, a class, call it a doubter's class, where they could come and say, hey, I, I got these challenges in my life, or I, I don't understand how this can be true. I think that would be a great place where, where a church could invite people who struggle and talk with others who've gone through it. Thanks, Ken, for sharing that wisdom. And I want to encourage all of you, if you haven't yet done so, go check out Ken's blog. Just go to reasons.org and search for Reflections.